All right, guys. Well, today we are back to work on the C6 competition drift car build. We've gotten a lot of the big projects knocked out on this thing. We got the chassis done. We got the entire drivetrain installed and mounted up. Trans mounts done. Engine mounts done. Diff mount done. All of that is sorted. It's leveled. It's square. We got the fuel cell in here. We got the steering column in. Uh, we've got a lot of the big bulky projects out of the way and a lot of the base stuff. We're not short of work to do here. We have another big project to get done. This is one. I've been kind of dreading because I'm not exactly sure how I want to do it and there's not really any sort of roadmap for it. We're just kind of uh, figuring it out as we go. And that is going to be closing in our trans tunnel. So if you're not familiar with this setup, basically normally in a vet, the transmission is in the back right in front of the diff. We went ahead and put a race transmission up here in the front. Um, there's a few reasons for that. This is a much more affordable transmission option than the race transmission setups you can get for the rear, and it's much more serviceable. With the rear transmission setup, if you want to do anything with the clutch, the clutch hydraulics, the trans, the diff, any one of those things, you have to drop the whole rear subframe with the transmission and differential attached and the torque tube, which goes all the way up to the bell housing. So you have to drop that whole thing out to service any one of those individual items. You know, there's teams that make that work and get it done, but for us, you know, we're a small group. With this setup, it makes it a lot simpler. You know, we're very easily able to pull this transmission at the track in a matter of 20, 30 minutes. You know, it's really just a matter of getting, getting the exhaust out of the way, dropping the trans mount, four bolts, boom, this thing comes out. So that's why we did it. But again, we got a gaping hole to cover up because we did decide to do it. So I tried to sneak up on this and not have to cut that much out. Uh, but to get it fully level, we had to cut pretty much this whole thing out. So now we got to figure out how we want to cover this. So I'm kind of torn on that. I'm not sure what direction we're going to go just yet. Uh, I like the idea of welding it in to add that structure back, but bolt in, you know, it'd be nice to make it removable. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. The first thing we need to do is whip out some CAD and start getting a general direction on shape, size, so on and so forth. So we cut out a general sized piece of cardboard, just a rough measurement and started marking where it needed to bend. We're trying to follow the line at the front of the firewall to start. Now this is a tricky thing to do with a cardboard template because they don't really hold their shape all that great, especially with a bend and the bends need to be pretty precise. So we're trying to do two bends, one bend to follow the main shape to get the structure on top of the tunnel and then another bend to come down the side of the tunnel to seal it off and bolt it in. So we test fit it back in and it wasn't really telling us much, I'll be honest. So I decided, you know what, let's just cut it out of some steel, start doing some bends. We'll probably have to scrap the first piece, but that'll at least give us an idea of what direction we need to go, what we need to do and how this is gonna fit because the cardboard just really wasn't cutting it this time. The CAD usually works pretty good, but this wasn't a great CAD time. So I went ahead and traced it out, traced out the general shape. Now, this was kind of tricky because the problem is the, the cardboard template isn't perfectly straight it was cut with a razor knife so trying to base the shape on the metal I, I didn't think it was going to end up with a good result so i went ahead and kind of marked the general shape but then traced it out to where everything was uniform and even before one side was a little longer than the other and then we whipped out the plasma cutter this is the best way i could think of to do this i'm not huge on using the plasma cutter just because it is tough to get a straight cut and you do end up with a lot more cleanup but it, when you get into complex shapes and a big sheet like this it's it's really one of the only choices. If this was aluminum, we could do a jigsaw or a normal circular saw, but since this is steel, we gotta cut it with the plasma cutter. So we did our best to get straight lines using a uh, guide. That definitely helps a lot if you clamp a guide down and you can run right next to it. And we get the general shape cut out without too many bobbles. It, it, it's good enough good enough for government work right so we go ahead and get the uh, belt grinder set up with a, a decently fine sanding blade because we need to get this slag off now normally most of what i'm doing when i'm putting stuff in the belt grinder is shaping it up getting a, a corner straight that i didn't quite cut straight or rounding off an edge or getting to a final shape that i just couldn't cut but in this case there wasn't much of that that needed to be done it was a pretty square piece but i really needed to get this slag off and as much as i tried it, it was pretty difficult I really wanted to get all of it off and make it perfect, but we had to settle for getting most of it off. Not too bad. So now it's time to mark out our bins. So again, we're kind of basing this off the cardboard template and I realized with the cardboard template, I didn't think things were quite right. So I changed my inside bins a little bit. I made them a little tighter and marked my outside bins roughly. Now we're gonna start with the inside bins and we're gonna try to get that done first. Basically what we wanna do is get the shape that follows the front of the tunnel 
you know, up at the firewall. If we can get that nailed down, then we'll work on the second bins that are gonna tuck down the sides for us to be able to bolt it in. So we get our bins done. We're, we're trying to sneak up on it. We don't wanna overshoot it. So our test fitted in there. We can tell it's a, it's a little wide still. We need to go a little tighter. It's easier to add a bend than to remove a bend. So we're trying to just, you know, creep up on it. So we get this thing back in the bender, try to add just a little bit more bend to it. Try not to go overboard. It's again, it's a very fine line. And then test fit it back in the car. And this time we're getting pretty close. We're getting close. Really need these to go to enough angle to touch. I mean, I guess I could try to bend just the front part a little more. Big fingers back out. <laughs> if you did that, and then you got all of the electronic and another bend like this. Oh, that's the plan. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. do another light bend to get this down, and then I'll just have to trim for up here. Just looking like something. So with the game plan for the bends in place, we needed to first tighten up the main bends just a tiny, tiny bit more to get it to where I was happy with it. And then we start on the second bend. So these are a tricky one because they're at an angle because it's gonna slope down from front to back. So we marked it as best we could, went ahead and bent it, test fitted it. There we go. Look at that, dude. That's pretty butter. Oh, well, this is going to get cut off anyway. It's really just going to be, I'm going to cut all the way back to here, and then it's going to be this piece bent down. Looks pretty good. I honestly don't really need to even do anything with these upper corners. So this is where I made a little bit of a mistake. I wanted to get as much of this in one piece as possible. It's super satisfying when you can just bend, bend, bend and, and make something out of one or two pieces. So we went ahead and took some of the fingers out of the finger brake, put a small one in the middle so that we could bend just this end piece, but it didn't work out. All right, well, I'm honestly pretty happy with that. For our first attempt, I thought this would take a couple tries at least. Uh, trying to get this, we were trying to bend this last piece and make this all one piece here, uh, but it just wouldn't fit in the bender and it kind of bound up a little bit and tweaked this a little bit. So it's not, it was pretty dang good. And now it's a little, it's a little not perfect. I'm gonna see if I can massage it back. But I mean, overall it looks pretty good. Like it looks like, you know, what you would expect. I'll probably ding in this. So ah, it's pretty much touching anyway. Uh, but yeah, so we need to build this piece, which we can probably make it out of one piece and do the bend for the little triangle corners. That would be ideal. So, uh, but we also need to find a good way to attach it up front here. I think we're gonna try to bend a piece of flat bar that we can tack in and then have this bolt to that. So let's try that. So we started measuring out our piece of flat bar based on the measurements that we took off the tunnel plate itself. So we wanna basically perfectly match the curvature of the tunnel plate so that this fits snug up against it and gives us a nice header board up there at the front to bolt to and to seal to. So we start bending and checking and bending and checking. And again, we're trying to perfectly match the curvature of the tunnel plate. So there's a lot of bending and checking. This is the one we really got to sneak up on. We have no wiggle room here. If it's off, it's not really going to do anything. So we even have to bend it back a touch, but we get it nailed. We get it pretty much perfect. So then it's time to drill a bunch of holes. So we wanted to have a bunch of attachment points here. We could have got away with probably three, but we decided to do six just to be thorough, just to make sure that we could get it to fit up really nice and tight. So Josue went ahead and drilled out the six big holes for the rib nuts. And then I went ahead and installed the rib nuts with this power rib nut tool. This thing's honestly pretty nifty. It's it's a little tricky to get the hang of compared to what I'm used to with the hand pull one because that one you can really feel when it bottoms out and when it's basically compressed as much as it can. Whereas this, it's definitely easy to overshoot it and pretty much ruin your rib nut. Look at that. Rib nut city, dude. 
From there, I went ahead and ground down the trans tunnel just in a few spots. I'm trying not to make a huge mess in here in the interior, but we need some spots to tack this to. We plan to panel bond it in once it's in place, but we wanted to tack it in place so that we knew it was in the right place and uh, we could do everything around it being positioned. So I went ahead and got one tack in there. Oso yelled at me for uh, messing up the paint by just throwing things around. I'm not used to having nice things, okay? It's, it's a tough one. So we went ahead and test fitted the tunnel plate back in to make sure it fits before we throw more tacks on it. We want to make sure this thing is exactly where it needs to be. Hey, it's not going to be perfect. It's tacked in pretty, yeah. And it's tacked in everywhere where I ground down. It's not going anywhere. It's sturdy. I was expecting this to be very difficult. Not that it's not difficult, but got our bolts up there. We'll have one or two here. And then maybe nothing here if we can get away with it. Wait, tomorrow I'll put some uh, transfer punches in there. All right, tunnel is coming along nicely. It's nice and snug on there. We are gonna panel bond it uh, basically all the way around to seal it up nice. Uh, it'll basically be one with the car at that point. But yeah, so this will mount to that. So, so far we have avoided having to repaint in here. Now it's gonna get tricky when we build this cover plate because we've got to grind this down and try to get this all flush. It's, that's going to be tricky. I'm really hoping we can avoid that because with this being removable, we can take it out of the car, just like our trans mount plates, paint them, put them back in. So anyway, what we need to work on now is this, this piece here. So I'm hoping I can get it out of one piece. <sighs> I'd kind of like to add at least one flange here to bolt it down or at least to put a seal under it. Um, but if we tuck that flange on the inside, I think it would look cleaner if we don't have a flange here with bolts. And I don't think we need them if we're bolting right here. You know, we can get it snug down. We're gonna weather strip the whole thing. It's just, it is very important that this is sealed for safety reasons with fire. Um, and then also just for comfort, you know, not having a bunch of engine bay heat come in here. So <sighs> let's uh, whip the cab back out and see what we can come up with for that. But we've got plenty of clearance for our trans, so really, really happy with how this is turning out so far. Definitely better than I could have hoped. But that being said, enough jibber jabber, let's get back to work. So I knew that this was going to be a very tricky piece to make and even still a tricky template. I started looking at trying to mark it out and make it one piece, the template itself, but I quickly realized it was gonna be easier to make it in multiple pieces. Sometimes when you have something like this with a really complex bend and shape, it's easier to make individual pieces, tape them together, you end up with more accurate bend lines and better fitting pieces because you can kind of easily massage each one on the way in. So we get the left side done, the right side, we, we cut it out, we had to redo it, it wasn't quite right, trim that a little bit, and we got it to a point where we were happy with it. We got it all taped up, now we have our template. So unfortunately, I didn't have any drops of this steel lying around, so I had to go wait, break out the, the plasma cutter, cut another piece out of the big plate of steel, and then we could trace our template over. So I decided to wait to clean it up in the belt grinder until we cut it out, since we we're gonna have to cut the shape out of it anyway. The bandsaw leaves way less slag, so really the main thing we needed to clean up was the slag from the one side that's plasma cut. It's it's the same struggle as the main plate. It, it's really hard to get all of this off, but we got it clean enough to where we were happy with it. And then we decided to take apart our template and start marking out our bend lines. So we knew from center where our bend lines needed to be with just the one piece. So we threw them in the bender. This was a very easy piece to bend. I didn't even need the handle. And uh, hey, we got it We got it pretty, pretty dialed. I'm pretty happy with it. The piece itself came out really well all things considered, it's what it needed to be. All right, well, we've got our piece in here, fitted up pretty good. The piece came out great, it's just, when I got greedy and tried to bend that last bend on this panel, I tweaked it enough to where there's really no good, great way to make it work, unfortunately. Uh, but overall, I'm happy with how this piece came out. This was a pretty complex piece to make. So we're gonna go ahead and tack that in the car. It's definitely a critical, 
you know, if it's off a little bit, it's not gonna work out great. So we're gonna tack that in the car. We've got the Fronius Magic Wave 230i rolled out here. Uh, it's so nice, it comes with long enough weeds to where I can roll it away from the bench, have plenty of room to get in the car without even unplugging it from where I normally plug it in. So that panned out pretty well. So yeah, let's tack this. It's always the worst when you go through all that trouble to set something up, move the welder, move all your stuff, get in position, attack something in the car, and it takes 10 seconds, and then you gotta move it all back to actually weld it on the bench. So we got straight to work on welding this thing out. It definitely wasn't the easiest thing to weld, being that it was a little thin. That wasn't too much of the problem. Where the gaps were tight, we breezed through it. We went ahead and welded up both places where we had decent gaps, but that one big monster gap, the elephant in the room, that guy was pretty tricky. We had to really work some magic on that, weaving back and forth, trying not to melt it away, but we got it done. We got it welded all the way across. Not the prettiest thing in the world, but... We'll probably grind this down smooth before we paint it anyway, so it looks like one piece, so not the end of the world either. We got it done, that's what matters. Haha, <laughs> that's pretty solid. Pretty solid. Look at that, dude. I, I'm definitely pretty freaking happy with that. That looks good. That gap turned out not so bad. It was definitely tricky to weld, but not so bad. But yeah, okay. I'm gonna wait till the sway gets here to put some transfer punches in those M6 holes and tap it because we really need to make sure it stays in one spot as we tap for all of them. And I guess we can start working on this, Johnny. Whip out the CAD. Ah, oh, really not looking forward to cutting this off. Drill out the spot welds. Take this whole thing off. Oh no, but then it'll be low. I don't know, let's see what we can figure out. So as I said, this was something I was definitely dreading doing because if one slip of the grinder and I'm scratching the paint and the whole goal here is to not have to repaint inside the car because then we'd have to tape everything back up. So we're trying to avoid that. That's why we're making all these pieces removable. So this cut is important. We gotta get this right. We can't screw it up and make more work for ourselves down the road. So luckily we get it out, we get it done and we start making our template. So I cut out the general shape first and then start trimming and trimming and trimming. So I'm trying to get this to fit tight around the shifter, but leave it room. We don't want it making contact with the shifter, but we might as well close the hole up as best we can. So then we start tapering the edges for the curvature of the tunnel. And then it's time to, you guessed it, what about the plasma cutter cut the piece out yet again? So this one, this template is a lot better than the trans template. This template actually reflects what we're trying to cut. So I just went ahead and perfectly traced the template and just cut the uh, main shape out based on that. So this was a little easier in that sense. It was a little tougher in the sense that we couldn't put any sort of bar on the side to run along. Everything had a little bit of curvature to it, so we had to freehand it, but all in all, it came out pretty good. It cut out nice. We, we tried to minimize the slag by getting the amperage right, and overall, no complaints. It fit pretty good. So now it's time to attach it. And I was gonna rib nut this, but there's just not a lot of meat in some places to fit the size of a rib nut. So I decided to drill a bunch of pre-holes and then we're gonna self tapper it in. Now I know how that sounds. I know how it sounds, believe me. This is not something that we should be removing often. And it's just one of those things. Uh, so we went ahead and drilled the holes out and then we needed some sort of support for the driver's side. It's basically just hanging over an empty hole. So I took this little piece of scrap bent it at a 90, went ahead and drilled some holes in it as well, some pre-holes, and we're going to attach this to the side of the tunnel to basically give us some structure under the plate where the factory shifter went. Because again, it's just kind of floating in no man's land. There's no real way to attach it or to even seal it. So both of those things are important. So we drill out some holes. We use Clecos because the plan with all of this stuff is to be able to take it all back out, paint it, and then reinstall it. So that's why we're not permanently attaching anything just yet because we wanna be able to pull it all off the car, paint it all in one big batch, put it all in, and hopefully it'll look like nothing ever happened. So this thing actually came out pretty good. Fits nice, nice and flat, covers the whole shifter poking up right through. If we ever need to get to anything on the shifter below that, we can easily pull the plate off, bada bing, bada boom. 
I'm happy with it. So we had gone ahead and drilled the holes as well to bolt this header panel to our trans tunnel cover plate. Now, as we got real tight on these, it started to angle it up. The header bar that we put in was at a little bit different angle than the actual plate, but it was snug up to it. It did seal to it. We just couldn't tighten the bolts all the way down yet. So we got it all in place. We got it where we wanted it. We drilled our holes for our side mounts. So we're gonna have the two bolts on the side here that we're putting the rib nuts in for, and then the six bolts on the top, and that should squeeze the plate down, especially once we add the weather stripping and have a nice sealed off tunnel that's easy to remove. So with those holes drilled, we can put it all back in again, tighten all the bolts down this time, the front bolts and the rear bolts, and see how it all looks. So everything lined back up, everything went in good, and the main thing is it, it all stayed snug down. That's always tricky when you're drilling holes for something like this. You wanna be able to get the bolts in, but you also want them to pull the piece super tight. All right, trans tunnel is officially done. We still have to weather strip it, we're gonna use a couple different kinds, but we gotta make sure we seal it up good. And I, you know, obviously, however we do it with the weather stripping, need to be able to easily remove it, put it back, you know, not a one-time use thing. But we got a couple ideas there, but honestly, it, it all fits pretty good. We banged that corner in a little bit since it was bolted in now, and yeah, I'm really happy with that. So we'll need to uh, pull it out and paint it again with all this stuff. We'll need to pull this out and paint it. I got this shift boot. But I didn't realize how tall it was. I've got it like smooshed down here. I want to be able, as silly as it is, I want to be able to see the shift handle poking up. And this, this one's too tall. So we're going to have to figure out a different shift boot. But uh, all in all, this, this all came out really good. I'm super happy with that. That's a big, big project to have off the chopping block. Something I've been, you know, kind of pondering, wondering exactly how I was going to do it for a while now. And it came out good, especially once it's painted. It should blend in pretty well. So... Uh, next thing we need to do is finish mounting the fuel cell. So we got it, the bracket built last time. It's all done, but we just need to uh, drill our holes, put our rib nuts in that, get that finalized. We'll be moving right along. So I guess let's get to it. So this was a project I was definitely dreading because where the fuel cell is, where we need to put the rib nuts is pretty much right under the down bars. The front two aren't too bad, but the back two they're gonna be tricky. So I ordered these short drill bits. I have this right angle drill and we were at least able to get the pilot hole done straight and the first couple sizes done straight. But as you get bigger in the bits, they get taller and it got to the point where it was easier to come from a further angle with the real drill. And we had to do some finagling to get this hole drilled relatively straight, get the rib nuts in there straight because if they're not straight and nothing's gonna work right. But we got it done and everything fit perfect. All the holes lined up perfect. They're the exact size. The bolts went in. Super exciting. This thing is officially done. So, perfect. This thing is part of the chassis now. Hell yeah, dude. The fuel cell is mounted. This thing is incredibly rigid. Very happy with how this turned out. Fits in there right where it should. Fuel cell is nice and tight. Um, that I'm super happy with that. We got plenty of clearance to our drive shaft. It's kind of hard to see from back here. Yeah, maybe you can see. Because the drive shaft is a good bit below the flange there. So, and it'll be angling away. And we got plenty of room to come through here with our exhaust. Just like that. So that's good. Man, a feeling of accomplishment. I was dreading getting these rib nuts in, drilling the holes and everything, and it wasn't great. I mean, they drilled crooked and uh, it all it all panned out. We got it done, we persevered. Same with the tunnel, trying to figure that out. Getting that header panel in. Oh, this looks snazzy. Oh, we're getting there, dude. That's two big projects. Off, oh, let's, let's, let's take them off the checklist. Let's make it official. Hopefully I haven't already put them off the checklist. Oh yeah, oh yeah, you see it. You see it, trans tunnel done. Uh, did we do the fuel cell? Mount fuel cell, yeah, see, we already, we cheated ourselves on that one. <laughs> uh, we kinda did this, but we still we still gotta finish doing that. Still gotta do that, still gotta install the search tank, lines, mount easy, dry some tank, dry some enclosure, mount pedal box, still gotta order. This is my to order list. This is my to do list. So you can see we need a starter, physical wire, bulkhead connectors, engine connectors, Raycon sleeve, brake and clutch master cylinders for the pedal box, drive-by cable bracket for the pedal box, seat harnesses, del ring control arm bushings, we might not need those, uh, 3N90 bulkheads, brake lines as a whole, 
<laughs> Another ECU bracket brackets. Uh, electric power steering pump, fans, Peterson regulator, Lexan hatch. So we got a few things to order. But hey, not too shabby. Cruising right along. Literally the next big thing is the turbo kit. That's really, and there's really not much we can do aside from the turbo kit next. Because really all, of, uh, most of that other stuff is gonna revolve around the turbo kit or we don't have it. Like I need to get the master cylinders for the pedal box for us to mount that, which I need to figure out what size I need based off the brake calipers and, uh, and the clutch master. So there's a few things like that. I mean, we can mount the dry sump tank and build the enclosure. We could do that, uh, you know, while we're on a building sheet metal spree. I'm not sure how we're gonna do that. Uh, probably be good to build it out of the steel and weld it in, but I was kind of planning on making it out of aluminum and bolting it in, maybe panel bonding it in. I don't know, we gotta figure that out. Obviously we still gotta take all this stuff out and paint it so it all matches nice, but yeah, sweet dude. I am, I am stoked. Oh, my dry sun belt came in and it was the right size, the one I ordered. So very happy about that. It's real tight getting it on, but it's the right amount of slack. So good there. It's only gonna get a belt for this before we build a turbo kit, but really next is build a turbo kit. So we're just waiting on one thing. I'm sure we'll find stuff to do. Hopefully the thing we're waiting on comes in soon and we can make a decision.